Hey idiot, it's me. Uh, it's Star Wars season again, so we get new TV shows, games and films, until everyone's completely sick of Star Wars and never wants to hear about it again. It's an exciting season this year especially since we got this really fun like Metroidvania game and an apparently good TV show, but it's all overshadowed by what's probably the worst Star Wars film ever made. I can't wait for the 10 hour long review of it that no one will watch, aside from random people on Twitter who yell that media quality is objective. I'm kind of tired of Star Wars if you can't tell, and for some reason I decided to make it like way worse for myself by making a video on a Star Wars game. Uh, I was going to make it on Star Wars Bounty Hunter because it's a game I remember liking when I was fairly young, but never hear anything about it now and wondered why. It's because it's not very good. Bounty Hunter is perfectly fine. If you said you liked it, I wouldn't tell you it's objectively bad and link hours of YouTube content, but it does feel fairly standard. It plays like your typical action-adventure game from the sixth console generation, you know? A lock-on third-person shooting, linear stages with light exploration, that sort of game. But what I did notice about it was that it didn't put much effort into making you feel like a bounty hunter. When you think of a lot of Star Wars games, they have a fantasy they want to recreate, you know, to pilot a TIE fighter, or to be a Jedi, or, you know, to be a Jedi again. And Bounty Hunter is the same. In all fairness, Bounty Hunter did have it more difficult than these other games. For piloting a TIE fighter, flight sims had existed for years, and for being a Jedi, action games had used melee combat for years. But being a Bounty Hunter isn't as simple. It'd be more of a puzzle than an action game, and there's a bunch of seemingly tiny things that make a huge difference. A game that understands this is Republic Commando. Republic Commando is a game which was kind of made out of response to the more family-friendly prequel films. The team had worked on games like Star Wars Starfighter previously, and so they wanted to make... It was made to be a more military-focused look at the Star Wars universe, having you control a clone commanding a small squad, similar to games like Rainbow Six. It went through quite a few problems during development, including the restructuring of LucasArts as a company and the new company president not having faith in the game, but nonetheless it released on the Xbox and PC between late February and early March of 2005. You play as Delta-38, the leader of Delta Squads, which is made up of Scorch, Fixer and Sev. And the plot is that... Uh, you play as Delta-38, uh, the leader of Delta Squads, which... The game takes a similar structure to something like the first couple of Call of Duty games. There's three short campaigns, which each are, like, dedicated to their own separate... I think they're called military expeditions, I'm not sure. Basically, there isn't really a goal throughout the whole game. You're not travelling across space to defeat the Empire. You've been given a mission and you're to be helpful and complete that mission. There is notable writing in Delta Squad themselves, but I'm gonna leave that just now and get back to it later because it kinda connects to other things. The graphics are actually kind of interesting. A lot of Star Wars games just use imagery from the films, but Republic Commando actually went out of its way to change things for the game. Most notably, the clones have been given a different design. It takes elements from the original, obviously, but it's also got influences of, like, Roman gladiators and real-world soldiers to get a more military-esque look. You also see this in the weapons, like, Trandoshan weapons are made more rustic and have lots of imperfections to give more personality to the races. Things like this really cement the kind of tone of the game while giving it personality outside of the, like, just military look. On top of that, there's lots of little details to make the game feel grounded and have the world make sense. Again with the weapons, this Gene Ocean weapon takes, like, the blood of its user and converts it into its ammo, and this is visible in the design. Even with the HUD and everything, nothing is just an in-game ammo counter or health bar. It's all shown as if it's the clone's view. It's really well done and adds to the more groundy tone of this. I even think the art style changes are one of the main reasons people still remember this game to the extent they do. It separates itself really well from other Star Wars properties, but still feels like a Star Wars game. The music's mostly still here, the sounds are familiar, and the designs haven't been changed to the point where they're unrecognisable. It's all still Star Wars, they just changed things to fit the game better. 
I wish more Star Wars games did this. I know a lot of them were based off of the films and they didn't want to change its look, but they're changing things from the film here and it ends up giving it its own identity really well. In fact, the music has been changed in places as well to make it kind of darker, which fits really well. There is this bug though that turns the music off when you boot the game up and I sometimes forgot about it and played the game without music, which like just isn't great. Oh, I also had the problem with the graphics in that I wished there were more of those like weird Bjerk costumed aliens, you know, like that massive slut Jabba and stuff. Oh, also the screen shake is like really bad. <laughs> it genuinely throws your aim off at complete random and makes some sections just awful. You'll aim and then some explosion will happen that you didn't see by the way, and then you'll have to aim again and then another explosion would happen and it just loops forever. This isn't even with grenades or anything, it just kind of happens and it's like, alright, calm down. Aside from that, the presentation is really good at translating the world of Star Wars and just, it looks quite good anyway, so... Good. Oh yeah, shit, there's a game as well, isn't there? As I said earlier, it's a squad-based FPS, similar to like, Rainbow Six. But while Rainbow Six is kind of strategy first, FPS second, this is more FPS first, strategy second. You command a small squad, telling them where to take cover, who to focus attack on, whether to charge or stick to you, you know, stuff like that. It's not incredibly deep, but you have more choice than it feels like. That's because of just how streamlined it is. You don't go through command menus to tell soldiers what to do, you just look at the object you want them to interact with and press a button. Or for formations, you don't even look at anything, you just press a button. It feels really smooth and the game is definitely at its best when you're performing this juggling act of who's focusing objectives, who's sniping, who's throwing grenades. It's all really smooth and feels great. You can also use the corpse of Wookiees as cover if that's your thing, it's fucking ruthless. It also uses this aspect as a storytelling device. As I said, the story doesn't have much going on, but your squad is made up of really fun and interesting characters, including the first ever TF2 character, Sev. And this is especially noticeable because they help you in combat and you rely on them. I played for Halo Reach recently, which took inspiration from Republic Commando, but the squad in that is much less memorable. Remember June. I, I genuinely only remember June because I got this player card afterwards. It was like, you can finally display June's face on your player card. And I was like, who? I think this is because you hardly ever think about your squad member in that game. You see them in cutscenes and you might hear them say something in game, but when you're actually playing the game, they can go off and do their own thing with you not really caring. They end up functionally the same as the random marines you see running around, and it creates this weird divide between you and the character. But in Republic Commando you have to think about and remember them, and you have to protect them to some degree while they protect you. It's a wonderful idea that really adds to the personality of this game from a writing and gameplay perspective. I do still feel there are some improvements that could give it more of an impact on the writing ends. The fact there isn't much of a plot does get in the way again, as there's no reason for these characters to like change or improve over time. There's no bet where they're like pushed to their limits and they need each other's help to get through everything, but I don't know if these moments would even be allowed to happen because the game barely ever slows down. It's a war, obviously, so constant fighting and tension makes sense, but compare this to The Last of Us, like you probably remember Ellie and a fair amount about her, despite the fact she acts similar to your squad in Halo Reach, where you don't really have to think about her in-game. Actually, I'm remembering now there were bits in The Last of Us where you had to help Ellie, like across water and stuff, but, um, ignore that. This is probably because the game slows down quite often to have quieter, more character-focused moments that tell you more about her. Republic Commando doesn't have this, it's just constant battles where a lot of the character of your squad is shown through really quick one-liners or conversations. These do show their characters fairly well, but I just feel like more could be done with the writing considering how well the game and writing are tied together. The squad does also have its problems on a gameplay side, but that's more to do with the game outside of it. So the actual shooting is very standard, it reminds me somewhat of the shooting at the start of Quake 4, where your movement options are so limited that there isn't much you can do to defend yourself and you just kind of have to shoot. It's not very interesting and is kind of boring if you don't have the squad, which is emphasised with these sections where you are on your own. 
Each campaign has a section like this, with the longest being on the second campaign. It's fairly dull and standard, and it's fairly obvious they have to limit the mechanics they can use because you don't have any teammates. In the ship campaigns part, where you're on your own, you pretty much only fight the Trandoshans. On the Geonosis campaigns part, where you're on your own, you only fight, like, one super battle droid at a time. It's kind of clear the game's not supposed to be used this way, and yet they use it that way multiple times. I've not mentioned actually, the reason you can't fight many enemies is because a lot of them have an insane amount of health. It's not even like Halo where you can unload a magazine into an enemy, it's more like Destiny or Borderlands where taking down one enemy is like a task. They would have done this because the rest of the game is designed like Destiny and Borderlands, as if it's co-op and you have to work together to take down enemies, but that kind of falls apart at these single player bits, since most enemies are designed to be fought with teammates. But even when you have your squad, these tougher enemies just don't really work. The way the AI for your squad seems to work is that if they don't have a job and are just fighting enemies, they'll kill an enemy, take a break and repeat. This works fine for weaker enemies since they can kill one, then reload and move on to the next, but with tougher enemies it can get to a point where your teammate is just standing, getting repeatedly hit by the enemy as they shoot them. This obviously just looks really dumb, but it's especially annoying because... Most enemies work perfectly fine, you know, they deal the amount of damage you'd expect them to deal. <laughs> Some though... I don't know what happened, but some of the enemies deal a ridiculous amount of damage which totally breaks the game at points. Like, watch this. And this happens with a bunch of enemies. It's not that bad since you can revive your teammates and they can revive you, but it's obviously not great. It often kills the flow of combat and feels buggy. I actually had to turn the difficulty down to easy for that part I just showed. And as much as it hurts me to say, I'm not an epic gamer, and even then I can't think of another time I've turned down the difficulty setting. It's just not something I do, but I don't know how you're supposed to physically beat this. Same with this timed bit and this bridge bit, like just the combination of high health for enemies and the low health for you means I don't know how you do this. It's not like looking up a mountain and thinking it will be too hard to climb, it's more like just being told to climb a really high brick wall. like. I tried climbing, but what do you want me to do? I don't think these are like the big problems with the game though, it's mostly fine, and these are just small problems that get in the way sometimes. The big problem with it though, and the reason I don't really recommend it, is that it just hasn't aged very well. In my last video I talked about Condemned, and despite coming out a few months within each other, I never thought about age when playing Condemned, and I did quite often with Republic Commando. What makes this weirder is that they're both the same genre and feel fairly similar, but I think the reason is where they're trying to innovate. Condemned hasn't really been challenged in first-person melee combat design, but narrative in games has evolved quite a bit since Republic Commando, and so its connections between you and your squad don't feel like they're used to their fullest. I know you had games like Silent Hill, Metal Gear Solid, and you know all the RPGs and stuff, but I mean generally, how narrative is weaved into games and the actual narratives themselves are given much more care now than back then. So this game ends up having the same problem as I had with Quake 2, where its innovations are great and interesting, but I'm having to look at them next to like Red Dead Redemption 2, at which point it's like, it's just not really fair. But unlike Quake 2, I think the innovations here are still worthwhile nowadays. If this had a sequel now, with more of a story focus, I would probably love it. In fact, there was a planned sequel, but it was scrapped. This is the cancelled Star Wars game I want back, not 1313 or Battlefront 3. So much more could be done with it, and it's just a shame that I don't think much will come of it. It doesn't even need to be Star Wars, just give this idea more space to breathe in any game. But for now, Republic Commando is fine. I don't recommend it, as in I don't think you should play it as soon as possible or anything. I don't think playing it was hurt either, it's decent, it's just more interesting in concept than in execution. This multiplayer mode doesn't help either, which just seems to be like generic deathmatch and stuff. There's nice customization where you can either be a cool space goblin or a boring space marine, just like Warhammer 40k, but setting it up doesn't seem fun. Servers for it, like, don't exist anymore, and there used to be one server of it up at all times on Game Ranger, but it seems to be gone now. Me and a friend tried to set up our own Game Ranger server, but it didn't work. We would have tried further, but from walking around an empty map, I found that the sensitivity is broken on multiplayer. 
It might be to do with the weird mouse on the menus, but I don't know how you can fix it. Speaking of that mouse, actually, like, I don't know what's wrong with it. On all the menus, the mouse is really sensitive, and again, I don't know how to fix it. It's not game-breaking, since it doesn't appear in-game apart from hints, but you can turn hints off since they're just stuff like crouching is good for ducking, which, like, I'd hope so. But anyway, that's Republic Commando. It weaves narrative into gameplay wonderfully, but has no narrative, so for what it's worth, you tried, but, uh, yeah. I wrote a bunch of, like, thumbs-up emojis on my script. I don't know what I meant by that. Um, it, play Republic Commando if you want. It's not bad. If you don't want to play it, then, like, okay. Uh, Happy New Year as well, I think. I don't know when this video will be out. It's the third just now, but, so, like, Happy New Year just now. I'll try and make more videos this year because, like, I think I'm gonna die soon. Expect playing Vegas Pro to appear next to my status on Discord because I'm gonna completely burn myself out on making videos. Um, I'm not, I'm not bad at ending videos, by the way. I'm just kind of confused by how I'm supposed to end this. I'm just looking at the thumbs up emojis. I don't think I'll ever live to see a profit. I don't want to be a locket clinging to a chest till the last breath.